Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Spring is finally here. The spoil you guys who are uh, baseball fans. For me, opening day is always like the official start of spring. For all of us, again, so the broken record. For all of us who just can't stand that nasty winter weather in the Northeast, this is actually a beautiful, beautiful time. And hopefully we get some good 70, 80 degree weather until summer hits us with 150 degrees. So hopefully you guys are all celebrating life. Everybody's having a great weekend and hopefully everybody did uh, great last week. So uh, a lot of times that, you know, I've, I've been doing this now, it's going to be 20 years in May. Okay. A lot of times you, as a professional trader, at least me, um, I always love to play devil's advocate. I, I never take anything for fair value because Sometimes, you know, there's something brewing underneath the surface and I'm never trading with rose colored glasses. I never believe the market is as good uh, as it appears. And I also never believe the market is as bad as it appears. Sometimes you just need to really concentrate on your individual process. And the more times, the you know, many years that go by and the more times I'm into it, sometimes you don't need to overthink. Sometimes the market in the purest form of technical analysis is just that, okay? And we've been having such a really great tape, a really great linear tape for the majority of part since, let's just call it the bottom, right? The bottom of 2018, right? December of 2018. So we've been having a really, really good strong tape. And within that tape, the market's gotten very linear at times. And also at times, the market has shown you that, well, at any given point, they could pull the rug and not only can you give back a couple of days of trading, you can literally give back a couple of months of trading if you are positioned wrong and don't, um, you know, really don't identify uh, the potential pitfalls that are right in front of you. But sometimes the market is what it is. And if the greatest part, again, what we do here, especially during the weekend updates are we document what I'm thinking going into next week. And again, it's not just random opinions. This is based on technical analysis. And I've been saying this for years on social media. For all you new traders that are seeking alerts and this, that, and the other thing, somebody else to tell you when to jump, all the information is right in front of you. Okay. You don't need to be the super hero chartist of the universe. All the data is in front of you. Sometimes you don't need to play a devil's advocate. You can see what the market is saying right in front of you and screaming out loud. So for example, last week we talked about this potential technical damage. What would happen if it confirmed this previous candle and what would happen with the next measured potential? Again, no Armageddon, but again, the theory of the PS60 theory is all well, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So all we did was validate a potential course of action that would lead the stock market back down to demand where it is. More important, what happened in that interval is what the bulls did after. And the bulls did hold rising support. And now the bulls for three consecutive days to end the kind of week, uh, we saw right a higher lows all across the board. So again, the frustration level for the uneducated trader is even worse than the perma bear because the uneducated trader is still trying to find themselves. They're still trying to find a valid process. They're still making the simplistic mistakes of forecasting and predicting, okay, and having an opinion. Again, our opinions don't count. I'm an idiot. I, my opinion doesn't count. This is what matters, okay? This is where it's going to tell me how to formulate a valid opinion. The idea of where we believe the market should go, okay, that's great. But again, our reality and the actual reality of the stock market are two different things. And when you look back at the week and you saw the first two days, and this kind of stemmed back from last week. If you guys remember when we talked about distribution and contracting channels, this week really showed you how patience is going to pay you, okay? It's not because you are lazy and you don't want to put on a lot of trades. Sometimes when the market is dictating, slow down, right? Slow down, take a step back, see exactly what the market's telling you. That's the right thing to do. Again, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of maturity. 
And you saw what happened last Thursday, last Friday, the channel started to shrink. Amazon was trading like a $5 spread. Uh, Tesla was trading in a very tight spread. Netflix, tight spread. Net all these stocks are trading in a tight spread. And all I kept on saying was this distribution cycle, it's not going to last. It usually lasts about four or five days because, again, when the stock market is coming off a, a top, called a rounding, potential roundabout top, or coming off the bottom and roundabout bottom, you know, you're getting both sides trying to seize control. The bulls are, are trying to keep control of the uptrend and the bears are looking for any type of, you know, information, any type of data, they could try to seize control of the downside. So you're gonna see a representation, a very valid representation of, of strength and weakness, sometimes in the same candle and sometimes in the same day. And that's why you see these really methodical tight ranges for about a four or five period. But I've always said this, okay, you don't need to trade for those days. Like for example, Monday and Tuesday, I did what I had to do to kind of grind out the day. I wasn't super aggressive. I wasn't trading, you know, overly, I, first of all, I never trade overly excitable, but I, I, I really knew what I was in front of it, uh, had, had in front of me. I knew what I was up against and I knew you can't squeeze water out of a rock, but I also know the, the, the channels will eventually expand when one side of the market, meaning this time the bears, kind of gave up. And you could see them kind of giving up after they tested this 176.50 level on the rising queues. And again, as you see in the last several days, you had three consecutive days of higher lows, right? Higher lows, and now this is a very definitive level that we'll talk about in a second. And the most important part is once the bears finally gave up control and just said, eh, forget it, it's over. You saw the channels magically, as I'm joking around right now, start to expand because again, there was less resistance on the sell side, more buyers and sellers, which sounds very, very simplistic. But again, that's how stocks move up. They move up when buyers clean up sellers and the stock market moves down or individual stocks move down when sellers clean up buyers. And that was a perfect case of patience is a virtue. Patience will, will pay and your overall process is going to be your number one lifeline uh, going forward. And Monday and Tuesday, super duper tight. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the channel started to expand, and you could clearly see the difference between how a stock trades in a distribution channel than a stock trades in an expansion channel. And based on your process, and again, we trade beta, 90, you know, 95% of all my trades are going to be the same trades over and over and over again. It's the same stocks every single day. They're obviously interchangeable, but it's the same things over and over again. And I know the difference between uh, Tesla trading in a dollar fifty spread or Tesla trading in an eight dollar spread. It's much more measured potential. So uh, you know, modest gains all across the board uh, on uh, the indexes. Um, Nasdaq a little bit more than one percent gain. Uh, da Dow about one point seven percent, and the S and P rose a tad over one percent. But more important, the bulls are setting up for a very very upward bias. And again, as I say every single week. Technical analysis, okay, so for all you guys who, and again, you usually don't see this in the large cap space, you don't see this in the beta space, you usually see a lot of bickering in social media on the small cap space. You're an idiot, you're a fraud, this is a pump, this is a dump, schmuck, schmuck, idiot, moron, blah, you live at home with your mother, right? It doesn't happen with natural order flow, okay? Professional traders who are trading the Qs, that are trading Tesla, who are trading Amazon, they don't care about anybody's opinion, okay? I don't care what you say, you think Tesla's a long? Okay, I think it's a short. Get on the other side of my trade. See, it's the most, it's the most equal validation instantaneously who's going to be right or wrong. So technical analysis, I say every single week, is not there for room for interpretation. So going into this new week, you know there's a two-sided trade here. Okay, a very, very clean looking two-sided trade. For the bulls, right, as everybody can see here, it hit the linear regression line twice, putting in a high of 179.72. Friday's high was 179.83. And again, you guessed it. Again, you don't need to be a superhero of the chart analysis world. If the Qs start to reclaim 180, right, then the next move is to this 180 area. And if they close below one, if they close above 180.80, just call it 181, then we're going to go to 82.63. Again, it's a puzzle. It's like taking steps. Again, if you're climbing up a staircase, you're not going to go from step one to step 11. You're going to go to step one, step two, step three, so forth and so on. On the downside, if the bears want to reclaim control of this market, well, then we have to close, believe, uh, below the 176.50 level. So 181 to the upside, 
176 to the, to 176.50 to the downside. And again, if you believe this theory of stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, you know, the old bro broken record, right? Then you know if the bear sees control of 176, 176.50, then we know we have a pretty good aggressive move to the downside. Again, I don't think that's going to happen. I really like the way the bulls handled. However, if they do get rejected for the third time and start rolling over, then again, everything goes back on the table. But again, you have to give the bulls from the technical point of interest, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. And again, very simplistic looking at it, uh, 180 to the upside, 176 to the, 76 to the downside. And that is your range. How you navigate in between is obviously very, very important. And I say this all the time. You don't need to trade with me, right? You don't need to trade pivots. You can trade anything you want, but your process needs to first and foremost embrace the information in front of you be via technically, and then you have to place place all your mental capital in the right direction, being careful not to burn it because you're fighting the trend of the market. So a uh, pretty solid week. Monday and Tuesday, uh, we're, we're contracting. You know, I did what I had to do. Again, you sometimes just have to manufacture runs. Like I use the baseball analogy all the time. You know, bunt to get a base hit, use a walk, get hit by a pitch, errors. Do what you have to do to kind of band-aid your day together and make it to the next day. Again, you're not trying to make your career in distribution channels, rounding tops, rounding bottoms. All you're trying to do is process enough information that's going to let you know how aggressive you want to trade or how passive you want to trade. And again, I'm not talking about, you know, the low float stocks like that, that went from two to a hundred. I forgot what the symbol was. Yeah, that, that's irrelevant to me. Okay. That, you know, that's so relevant to me because I'm not going to trade these things. I have no control in the stock. I'm not going to trade with the majority of retail. Again, as I say all the time, if 90% of retail is losing money, well, why would you want to be in the same trade with them? Right. Again, let that sink in before you start chasing some stock that just went from two to 90 uh, in 24 hours. But more important is uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, started to expand. We started seeing uh, more aggressive channels, and those channels really uh, clicked very clean. If you've been following me, especially on Twitter uh, or stock tweets for the, just in the last week, you saw how aggressive these channels were, especially towards the latter uh, part of the week. So again, going into this new week, and again, I don't, sometimes you don't need to uh, make a weekend update dissecting every little thing. It's, it's so tight right now, right? It's so tight right now on the top of the channel, the bottom of the channel. You don't need to overthink. Just set price reminders for both of these numbers, especially if you trade beta on the cues to the upside, on the cues to the downside, and obviously watch the ranges in between that you can take advantage of. So Friday, uh, going into Friday's session, especially during a uh, morning strategy and live webinar, I knew two things were going to happen. Okay, uh, The way the market kind of opened, um, we were kind of sitting in the middle of the ranges. And I knew going into Friday's session, two things are going to happen. Okay, We're either going to aggressively get above those ranges and the stock market, at least the beta names, we're going to go explode, okay? Or they're going to get re rejected at those levels, and we're going to have a very, very slow day. And what happened was it was kind of both, okay? If you look at the the majority of the index strength, it came after three o'clock from like eleven thirty in the morning. I think I I, I think I, when, when did I sell Boeing? I, I sold Boeing uh, well before like eleven thirty. We'll talk about that in a second, but. That was like my, you know, that was, that was it. I mean, from like 11, 30, 12 o'clock because of the Lyft IPO and the most unfortunate part, because Lyft came public on Friday, it really sucked the energy pretty much on everything else. Like everybody was watching and I, and I joked around that, but it wasn't even a joke. The last three cult IPOs, even though I don't really consider Lyft a, a, a cult IPO, but like the last three cult IPOs that I remember trading the same day, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, I lost money every single every single day that I traded those cult names on the first day. So I was like, listen, I have no interest in this Lyft. God bless. Let me see the way you trade. And it obviously uh, turned into be a pretty dud uh, IPO. If you bought the stock anywhere in the first five minutes, you lost money because the stock traded $8 off its highs. So um, yada, yada, yada. That's exactly what happened. So um, unfortunately, Lyft took a lot of the volume, a lot of the attention pretty much from everything else for the next like three, four hours. And until like the last half hour, 40 minutes a day, the indexes rose. But you know, the trading from at least for me was, was over. I was pretty, uh, pretty pleased with the week. Um, pretty pleased with the week. Beta you know, really 
demonstrated how impressive they are when they confirm those channels. And the most important part of it is we were in control every single day, more passive Monday and Tuesday, much more aggressive Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday was very, very selective. So uh, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, Monday's session. Um, here's kind of, and this is kind of where we are right now. And I want to show you guys is sometimes for all you guys who are uh, who kind of watching me, uh, the first time today joining us recently, everything I watch are 60 minute channels. And if you look at the 60 minute channels, let me give you guys just a good example on some charts. So when you look at the 60 minute channels, this is sometimes when I say you really don't need to think or overthink. You just need to let them, you know, you just kind of let them marinate and kind of confirm. So you see Tesla, very good daily looking chart. If it confirms this area, it's going to go. But look at the 60 minute, right? Look how tight the 60 minute channel is getting, right? Look at Alibaba, right? Look at Alibaba. So you got the 60 minute view breaking out right here. You have the 60 minute channel getting very, very tight. You can see the upward bias if it can starts confirming this channel. If you look at Apple, right? Look how tight Apple is getting. If it's Roku, right? Look how tight Roku is getting. Look at Boeing. Look how tight Boeing is getting. I think you get the message. So for us who trade, especially the most aggressive stocks day in, day out, all it needs for us to do to, to validate what the stock market, what we believe is going to happen, is wait for these channels to confirm. That's it. I mean, you could, you could clearly see, and again, the greatest technical study you can have. People use pitchforks, this, that, the other thing, wooden spoons, God knows what else anybody uses. But sometimes your eyeballs, well, most of the time your eyeballs, will really clearly tell you what should happen next and where the stock has the measured potential. So going into this week, I'm pretty bullish, okay, until it gives me a reason uh, not to be bullish. Everything is super tight and all they need to do is just to confirm. Uh, if you look Friday session, like I said, um, no, look, wasn't a lot of trades, but again, you don't need, some days you don't need a lot of trades to make your day, okay? You know, the stocks that we trade every single day, they usually will give us multiple opportunities throughout the day if you are patient. I only have six six candles throughout the day. Um, they're all six hourly candles. I know the top, I know the bottom. The most important thing is for me, see if I can get the value uh, right in between. So let's get into Friday's session. Uh, again, you don't need a lot to make a lot and you don't need a lot to trade properly. So uh, this was Friday's session. Uh, again, not a big move on the video. Um, I didn't take this trade. Uh, it was just too fast. Just too, I just couldn't get filled. It was just way too fast. NVIDIA rejected twice at 180, uh, needs to reclaim and build. Again, not a big move at all. Not a big move whatsoever. Uh, here is the 180 channel, right? 180, 180. Again, only put up a 60 cent move. You caught it for a scalp. God bless, I missed it. It was way too fast for me. And then the stock kind of came right back down. Uh, this was the really aggressive move. Uh, Amazon only gave like a $5 move and then you know, the market pulled in. Boeing, you know, we've been talking about Boeing. For all you guys in the live webinar, this has been on our watch list for a week, right? A week, every single day. 377 is the most important area. 377 is the most important area. The most important part, like I say, to kind of determine what a stock might do next is kind of what it's doing. And Boeing, with all the negative news, with all the lawsuits, with all the investigations, this, that, another thing, it stopped gapping down, or at least it stopped gapping down aggressively in about a week. So the one thing that we always know, whatever it doesn't go down, must go, right? And once the sellers are exhausted and once the buyers are comfortable and the sellers are comfortable, all the sellers are looking to do or subconsciously looking to do is wait for that buyer spree to confirm the top of the channel. And we've been watching this 377 Boeing for a week. And again, congratulations for all you guys who caught, caught this trade. Uh, so here is the, I mean, here's the, 370, look how many candles you have here, guys. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You have 25 hours worth of data. Okay, guys, 25 full hours worth of data, pre-market, after-market, all that counts. And once it finally broke that 77, just you know, really went on a big, nice move uh, to 382, and again, you guessed it, da, 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 on Monday, if it starts building over 382, it should go to 385. Uh, for all you guys who are still long the 385 calls, why is 384, 385 measure potential? Because that's where it is on supply. So big, big move on Boeing. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who traded that. Uh, this was super duper aggressive. So Morgan Stanley trim numbers, uh, trim numbers pre-market. And we said this is a two-sided potential aggressive trade for only 
uh, experienced traders, because again, new traders, they, their, their mind can't process information. If you're trading less than three years and you're trading a stock like Tesla, especially at the open, you better have full control of your emotions because you could get trapped very, very easily both sides. So again, not every single trade is for everybody, but Morgan Stanley, I believe it was either JP Morgan or Morgan Stanley, they cut estimates or trim that's whatever it was, whatever it was uh, on Tesla. It gapped up a little bit. And I said, hey, look, there's a two-sided trade potential uh, 281 if it builds long and if it gets rejected, obviously you can short it. Or if it goes green to red, right? If it goes green to red, that's a short. And I said, not a clear picture until realistically one con confirms the other. And this is what happened. I mean, this is what really happened. If you look at the 60 minute channel, it, it got rejected, right? It got rejected and it went red. It went red and the stock was down like four or five points instantly for all you guys who took a great job. But here's the great part, right? Here's the absolute great part. If you're waiting for that 281 pivot, it's still very, very valid, guys, right? Because the buyers came in at the bottom of the channel, trapped, uh, trapped aggressive shorts on the rising 60-minute channel, and now you have a realistic view that if Tesla confirms this top channel here, look at your potential, right, guys? Look at your measured potential. Maybe not in one day, but again, you have eyeballs. You can see there's no supply in between this 281 area all the way to 293. So if the market continues to be very, very strong and Tesla continues to kind of brush and negate headlines and this, that, the other thing, there's absolutely no reason why it can't get to this supply here because again, look at the runs, it's made into supply, into supply. So again, measured potential, if it starts confirming this channel, could get to this 293, 292, 293 level. So again, congratulations to you guys who took Tesla. Uh, Square never triggered uh, Alibaba. Good job for all you guys who took uh, Alibaba as well. Uh, 180, uh, 180, 70. Here's the 180, 70 area right here, right? 180, 70 right here. Uh, first push was like a dollar and change, and then it woke up and then started going. I still like it for Monday. Okay, I still like it. I mean, look at look at this beautiful chart. If it could start confirming uh, this one, and again, there'll be a sneaky pivot before this. But this 183.36, 183.40 level on the macro view, if it starts building, you do have room uh, to the 186 <clears throat> level as well. And uh, Boeing Fire, obviously. And that's it. And that's it. And basically, I wrote this. And look at the time I wrote this. This is roughly around 1 o'clock. This is the market that already got stale. And I said, look, really strong week. The lift has completely destroyed the volume in the rest of the market. Because, again, everybody was just kind of watching it because... Well, it's, it was kind of ironic that when something stops, it's like watching fish swim, very unproductive, right? But I was watching it also, didn't trade it again, didn't want to trade it, and 10% of all the highs. But hey, CNBC said lift surges on its first day of trading to the eyes of the beholder. So uh, going into uh, this week, again, bulls, I will give them the, the benefit of the doubt. Um, I am watching all these continuation channels uh, to the long side. Um, I just want to see what, you know, I just want to see what confirms. You see Netflix getting tighter, Baba, uh, Roku, Apple, Boeing. So again, for all of us who are trading beta, we could have a pretty aggressive move or a pretty aggressive potential week if these channels uh, do confirm. So for all you guys who can't make it to the live webinar, our Twitter feed, guys, uh, is pretty damn good. I mean, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> It's pretty good. You get all these pivots there. Uh, you get the nightly video that you see here uh, on the weekends. You get it Monday through Thursday. Uh, you get the, the four-hour PS60 workshop. It's a hell of a value. It's only 40 bucks a month for all you guys who can't get into uh, the live webinar. Um, so if you're joining us there, again, the tweed, uh, the tweed, the, the feed resumes uh, Monday morning. For all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar, please arrive at nine o'clock Eastern time. That's when we start looking at the early uh, pivots, early morning pivots, and obviously general uh, bias of what we believe is going to happen for that day. So guys, I wish everybody an awesome, awesome trading day. Go laugh, go smile, go love somebody, go kiss somebody. We only live once. There is no do over. Live your best life. God bless folks and have a great trading. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.